we still don't get what jihad is. Jihad, whether it is done through violence or whether it's done by stealthier measures, is always and everywhere about Sharia. It's about the implementation of Sharia, the spread of Sharia, and the defense of Sharia. Sharia is the Islamic legal and political framework. Uh, we would like to think of Islam as just another religion, you know, just a set of, uh, of religious principles that's separate from our secular societal life. It's anything but. It's a full-service, comprehensive, political, social, and economic system, a military system, that happens to have some spiritual elements. But its ambitions are actually authoritarian in the sense that you have a, a central Islamic state that controls everything. And it's totalitarian in the sense that it really does want to control everything. Is Every it political aspect. in scope? Yes, absolutely. Every aspect of life. The threat to us is much bigger and broader than just terrorism. And it's, it's really a march through our institutions, whether it's our political institutions, the law, uh, our whole society. There is a law in Sharia that says it's obligatory for a Muslim to lie if the purpose is obligatory. So, if your purpose is It to authorizes, do, under Sharia law, the ability to lie does, to get the end mean. It doesn't authorize it. It obliges you, you to must. lie. You must lie if your purpose is to promote Islam. And this is called taqiyya? It's called taqiyya, but it's more than that. It becomes automatic in our character as Muslims to defend Islam. It, the reputation of Islam, its ability to grow, is the most important thing. Islam is always looking at growth in numbers. And the key thing about Sharia, which makes it even worse than if you leave it in the hands of government, is that any Muslim who recognizes that the person has committed apostasy. Which means just leaving the religion. Just leaving the religion. You you will be forgiven if you kill, if you kill them. A, 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 an apostate Muslim is worse than an infidel. They can tolerate a Christian or a Jew as the people of the book, or the, <laughs> barely. Right. Uh, but even if they can tolerate those, they must never tolerate an apostate, somebody who turned his back on Islam. Uh, he is as good or she is as good as dead, and they would rather kill him. Uh, than uh, see them uh, becoming, uh, embracing the Christian faith. And that's why a former Muslim or somebody who doesn't want to practice Islam anymore, they're not just scared of the Islamic government or the Ummah or the state, the Islamic state. We are scared of anybody on the street. In order to get a first-hand understanding of what it means to live under an Islamic regime, but also to understand what radicalization means to the region, I thought it'd be good to talk to someone that came from that environment, that knew it firsthand, not just reading about it, but from personal experience. Taz Sada has actually served in that regime. Now he, of course, is the founder of a great ministry called Seeds of Hope right there in the Middle East. Prior to this, he served as a sniper for Yasser Arafat. Islam have an agenda, a very clear agenda, Islamizing the world. Islamizing and can, the world? Absolutely. And they're going to implement Sharia law. Sharia law is the toughest laws you'll ever encounter in your life. They are able to implement that in, in, in London, in England. And they are working on that in America. And what they're trying to do is see how far they can get before there is pushback. And as long as there's not pushback, they'll keep pushing. And it's interesting, they're very good at figuring out what the weak spots are. So in Europe, what we see are these physical enclaves that dot the landscape no-go zones where the police have basically, the states, have, have ceded sovereignty to the Islamic authorities. In the United States, we haven't seen much of that yet, but they realize the law, lawfare, is the, is the way to go here. Uh, so what they're obviously trying to do is get Sharia legitimized subject matter by subject matter in our law. So it's, it's in our financial system, domestic relations, employment relations, and that's how it will gradually progress. So we can't afford as a country to just ignore this? No. We do it at our own peril? If we care about remaining the United States that I think we want to remain, we have to pay very close attention to this.